Hello, welcome to Virtual Humans Lecture 8.1, Vertex-Based Clothing. In this lecture, we will see first how to represent clothing using vertex displacements and how to use this representation to do rep um, registration. Then we're going to see how to predict people in clothing in 3D from single images. And later, we will see how to learn a model of clothing as a function of pose, shape, and clothing style. So let's look at the clothing representation. We will see throughout the lecture different clothing representations based on vertex displacements, which we'll see in this lecture based on implicit surfaces, which we'll see in the next lecture, and also based on points and neural feature points and so on. So let's look at vertex displacements, which is perhaps the most um, basic version or the, the easiest representation. So if you remember, like simple is based on blind shapes. This means that um, you add a set of vector displacements on top of a base shape in order to model like the shape deformations and the pose dependent deformations. And everything happens in this canonical T pose. So now if we want to model clothing, um, we need to do something. And the easiest thing we can do is to add a, a set of vertex displacements, which we will which will model the clothing. So these vertex displacements will be on top of this base average um, shape on this canonical pose. So essentially, if we know the displacements, basically you can go from a shape that is undressed to a shape that is dressed, like you can see here, right? Notice the change. And we will see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this representation. I'm pretty sure many of you are already thinking what could be potential limitations of this, and we will see this um, throughout this lecture. So first of all, like using this representation, let's try to solve some actual problems. Like for example, register scans of people in clothing. So the registration process for clothing is not very different from um, registering people without clothing. Because recall that the model could not explain all the details, even when the per people were not um, wearing clothing. So the trick is to optimize for the model together with a set of freeform displacements or freeform vertices in order to gradually adapt to the scan. So starting from a scan, you um, the registration process um, works as follows. Um, we start the registration process by optimizing the model parameters, starting with some model. And once the model is close enough to the data, then the vert freeform vertex displacements, this D matrix that I showed before kicks in and obtain, and like this, you obtain a registration. So th this registration has the same number of vertices as the simple template, um, but now can represent like clothing on top. So um, as you guessed, probably, like the main problem of this registration is that it, it ignores completely the layering of clothing on top of the body. So this means that, for example, if somebody's raising their arms and the clothing is like shifting along with the body, then this representation is not tracking these changes, but rather explaining these changes by shifting vertices like um, in the normal direction, but not really tracking in the tangential direction to the surface. And this is, of course, for many applications, a problem. For some other applications, this might not be a problem, and this might be a perfectly fine representation. But if you want to play with texture or mapping clothing from one body to another, then there's something else you need to do. There's clearly a problem here. So. One way to address this is um, the work we did um, with cloth cap, where we segment the clothing into garment pieces, into separate meshes, and we estimate the body shape under clothing such that we can track um, the body shape under clothing and each of the garment pieces separately. And like this, we are obtaining a multi-layered registration, which um, captures um, what, what, like it captures better the, um, the physics of this um, of this motion. 
So the first thing that you need to do is to estimate the shape under clothing. And um, of course, this is a challenging problem because the clothing is occluding the shape. However, one observation we made in 2017 is that as the person moves, like the clothing will drape on different parts of the body and will be tied on different parts of the body. So notice as this person is moving, um, what I'm showing here on the left is the registration of the person uh, moving. And on the, on the right, I'm showing you this unposed registration. This is the motion of the clothing once we have factored out the effects of articulation out. So notice how in the unposed template, it's quite interesting to see that the clothing is draping on different parts of the body. So you might think, well, um, for single frame, it's pretty ambiguous where what the shape is. But if I see enough frames of a person moving with clothing, then these multiple constraints are giving me a lot of information about what the actual shape is. And this is what we exploited in this um, work, which we called um, buff. And essentially like what we do is we accumulate all these temporal frames of unposed registrations. And we consider the union of all these frames, which we, which we call like a fusion scan. This fusion scan you can imagine is like an onion with a lot of layers. And essentially what you can do is you can set up an optimization and you can ask the model to be inside of inside the um, convex hull of this union of registrations because you know that the clothing cannot intersect with the body. So you can optimize for the shape such that it's inside this um, onion, which we call like this uh, fusion scan. And this is what we do. And this is actually quite accurate to obtain the body shape under clothing. And it leverages this idea of exploiting the temporal information. All right, but this is only estimating the body shape under clothing. And um, we are interested in estimating also the garment geometry over time. So um, this is the overview of this um, work that we called cloth cap. So the input is basically um, a sequence of 3D scans in motion, which were captured with a 4D scanner. Um, we also manually define some, um, some labels on what we expect to, like which body parts we expect to overlap with, for example, the t-shirt and which body parts we expect to overlap with the pants. So notice that this is a very weak prior in order to obtain better segmentation of the scans. So then, like given this input, we um, we first segment the scans into pieces, and then we basically register like a multi-layered model of um, multi-layered version of simple, if you want, to these um, scanned registrations. So this is what ClothCap does. I'm not going to explain exactly how we do this scan segmentation because. Um, I think there's better techniques nowadays than what we did back then, which was based on, on um, Markov random fields and using these body priors. Um, but basically the idea is to leverage the body information together with the appearance information of clothing in order to obtain a segmentation. But I'm not going to explain this part. I'm going to focus on this multi-part registration in this lecture. So this process is fully automatic and um, it allows you to obtain a registration, including the body shape under clothing and each of the garments tracked over time. So how do we, how do we obtain these multi-part mesh registrations? Well, I mentioned several times um, in the lecture that in order to obtain good registration, you need a good model. And simple is not a good model for explaining people in clothing because it does not have clothing. So what we do here is um, we obtain like a simple model that is specialized for the subject that we are tracking. So the first thing we do is we segment the simple into parts, which, um, which correspond to the scan. So essentially you transfer this, um, this segmentation of the scan to the simple template from the registration. Then you cut the simple into pieces and then you deform the simple model in order, in order to explain the scan. 
Okay. And so once you've done this, you have like a mesh that has been, you know, segmented into pieces. But these vertices of this mesh, they stem from the simple model. And this means that we can use the simple function in order to change the pose or change the shape of this like segmented version of the simple model, right? And this is gonna be very useful to do registration afterwards. So essentially what we do is we use this cloth template as our model, and then we deform this cloth template non-rigidly to each of the scans in order to obtain this multi-layered registration. That's the basic idea. So we perform this registration in a way such that you know we capture also the non-rigid dynamics of clothing, right? Like these wrinkle deformations that happen when we are uh, moving. So let's look a little bit more in depth at how this is done. So um, same as with undressed bodies, we have like a data term and a coupling term. The data term is a scan to mesh distance. Um, this is similarly similar as what we saw for undressed bodies, but now we have like matching of each garment with each garment. And um, we also have terms to make sure that the pose underneath is correct. Then we have a coupling term, which is coupling the registration, which is this part here, right? To be close to our model. And remember that the model is not the simple model, but it's this specialized same simple model, um, which has been um, deformed to explain like the first frame of the sequence. And so it has clothing, but it does not have the non-rigid deformations over time. So notice how, for example, this wrinkle over here is missing in this average template, right? So the model can change over pose, but the pose only changes um, according to like this simple model, which does not know about wrinkle deformations and so on. So notice how you know the deformation in the registration is present, but not present in the model, right? Which is um, why you have a difference. And however, you want this to regularize the process. You want this registration to be close to the model, but you also want this registration to be close to the data, right? So we have the same trade-off as what we had for um, registration of undressed people. Okay, but segmenting people in clothing is much harder and we need additional terms. Um, so one term is a boundary term that at a high level means that we want to match the boundaries of this multi-layered registration with the boundaries detected in the seg seg uh, segmented scan. And we also want these boundaries to be smooth. And then we have a Laplacian term, which is making the whole surface of the registration smooth. So let's look a little bit more in detail at the data term. So the data term is minimizing the scan to mesh distance, but now we're not considering the whole scan as a piece, but we're considering the parts. So essentially this objective minimizes a scan to mesh distance, right? A per garment scan to mesh distance, e.g. Um, which measures the discrepancy between the garment from the model, VJ, or from the registration, to be accurate, um, and the garment of the segmentation, SG, right? So this is a scan to mesh distance between this scan garment part and the corresponding garment in the model. And um, the summation goes from garment one until n garments, so like, like this N is the number of garments that the person is wearing. All right, so this is the um, objective term. And notice that we're solving a more difficult problem, but the registrations will be much more accurate because now we have information about the segmentation and therefore this, this term will be much better behaved than if we would not consider um, the registration in as separate parts. Now, to make the garments in this in the model match with the scan, um, we also force the boundaries, this marked here in black, to match. And for this, we have like um, a scan to curve distances. So essentially for every point in the scan, SR, um, sorry, 
for every point in the scan boundary, this uh, boundary over here, for example, or this boundary over here, we want that this um, every point in the scan has uh, a, a small distance to the curve, which is the rings, right? The curves which correspond to the rings of the boundaries of the model. So we have like this sum over the rings starting from ring equals one until n. So these rings are ordered and we can know which ring corresponds to what. And essentially we minimize these um, per garment scan to curve distances, okay? So this is gonna make these vertices of the registration um, like match and it's gonna like allow us to, you know, um, deform the registration to track the boundary um, better. Otherwise you would not be tracking the changes very well. All right, so when you optimize these data terms, what happens is that um, the boundaries of clothing get really noisy and spiky. And this is not very visually appealing. And essentially you need to enforce smoothness, especially in the boundaries, because this is very important for the perceptual quality. So how can we enforce boundary smoothness? Well, um, if we consider a curve um, parameterized by the arc length S, right? This curve is gamma of S such that for every S, S is uh, the parameter that parameterizes the curve, which goes from zero to one. Like we have a different point on the curve, X of S, Y of S, and Z of S. You have, if, if I have such a parameterized curve, um, I can calculate the squared curvature as the square terms of the second derivatives. So I can calculate the second derivative on the X dimension, Y dimension, Z dimension. I square them. I sum them up and this gives me the curvature, right? The curvature tells me um, the inverse of the curvature relates to the radius that fits the curve at that particular point. All right, so we want the curvature to be small in order to have um, a, uh, a smooth um, curve. So to make boundaries smooth, we can minimize the curvature for each ring. So it's basically this equation over here which in discrete in like for a discrete curve um, for a discrete curve um, equals to the following. We have here like a summation over the number of rings, okay, from one to RL. But then for every ring, right, n iterates over the vertices in the curve, which is the ring, um, which might be, for example, like take this ring, for example. Uh, and then basically you can calculate the second derivative using a filter, one minus two, one. So essentially this is calculating the second derivatives, right? It's the Laplace operator in one dimension. So you have like the vertex before me minus two times the current vertex plus the vertex after me, right? In the curve. And this is giving me the second derivative. Um, so these vertices have x, y, z components. So it gives me the second derivative for x, y, and z. And when I take the norm squared, it is exactly the same as the squared curvature here. So essentially this term here, uh, what it's doing is like minimizing the curvature of the ring. It would just optimize this. Like what would happen is probably that the, the rings would shrink to a single point to minimize this term. But because we have other data terms, this is not happening. Okay, um, so that's the boundary smoothness. Um, so if you wanna have a, a mesh with smooth boundaries, that's what you, you can do. Um, if you wanna have an overall smooth mesh, which is important if you have like clothing with wrinkles, um, you need to um, enforce this smoothness. And this is done in a very similar way using a Laplacian term, which is pretty much equivalent to the boundary term, but for the full mesh. So for those of you who do not know what a graph Laplacian is, let me introduce some, um, some terms and definitions. So given a mesh, the adjacency matrix Z is defined as um, the matrix such that its elements Z i j equal to one if the vertex V i and the ver vertex V j are connected, okay? And it's zero otherwise. So it's essentially a matrix, the bi binary matrix, which has ones indicating which vertices are connected. Okay, it's one way of representing the connectivity of the mesh seen as a graph. 
So now let H be a diagonal matrix which where HII equals to the number of neighbors of vertex I. Okay, so if vertex I has six neighbors, then H of II would be equal to six, all right? So now we have um, that the graph Laplacian is defined as follows. It's the identity minus this diagonal matrix inverse, which is nothing else than inverting this um, number of neighbors at each entry, times this adjacency matrix set. That's the graph Laplacian. And this is a pretty useful operator for meshes. And um, it's a discrete version of the Laplace operator that you have seen perhaps in some mathematics lectures. So what we do to make the mesh smooth is to minimize a Laplacian term. And the Laplacian terms looks like this, and we'll understand in depth um, later, but bear with me. So we have sum over garment equal one until the number of garments. So for every garment, we minimize this Laplacian, which is basically the Laplacian matrix G, which multiplies the matrix of vertices Vj, the matrix of vertices of each of the garments Vj. And we minimize the norm squared, the Frobenius norm of this resulting matrix. Okay, so this is the graph Laplacian matrix for garment J, and these are the vertices of garment J. So what are we actually doing? What does this mean exactly? Let's look at this in a bit more detail. So when we multiply the graph Laplacian with the matrix of vertices, this is like a differential operator. And what we are actually obtaining is like um, these differential coordinates. So we obtain differential coordinates such that they, they basically look in the direction of the normal because essentially this operation, what it's doing is calculating the difference between the vertex i and the average of the neighboring vertices, right? This is this, this orange dot here. And it's calculating this difference between the vertex and this average. And this turns out to approximate the normal. And it also approximates the mean curvature around this vertex. So, um, so that's the, the Laplacian term. So now let's look at what we're actually doing. So when we are uh, minimizing this term, if we look at every um, vertex, what is actually happening, if we look at the energy that this is incurring in every vertex, so for example, like for vertex VI, what, what this is minimizing is like, like VI, right? VI minus one over HII, which is the number of neighbors, sum over vj. So this term over here is nothing else than the average vertex location of the neighbors of vi. And we're taking the difference. So this average is this orange dot here. This is this term over here. Okay. And the vi is this red dot over here. So when we take the difference, we obtain these differential coordinates, which is a vector, three-dimensional ve vector. And basically what we're doing is taking the squared norm of this vector, right? So we are making the surface look um, essentially as flat as possible, okay? Um, which is when the Laplacian will be zero. Of course, you will have data terms such that um, this is not completely enforced such that you can express wrinkles, for example. So you have a trade-off between explaining the data and satisfying the prior. All right, so this is the graph Laplacian, and this is a Laplacian term, which you will see in several papers, and it's a way of ensuring smoothness over a mesh. Um, it's a pretty pretty useful operator, and um, it works very well in practice, in, in my experience. All right, um, so once we've solved this um, objective function that I was showing you before, you obtain these multi-layered registrations, and the reason this is cool is because now you can um, have the garments perfectly registered with the underlying simple model, and you can essentially do linear, linear algebra with clothing and bodies. So you can essentially take the displacements of the garment, you can calculate them as um, the garment itself, G, right, minus the part of the body here, 
um, that corresponds to this garment. And remember, G and T, which is the template of the body, are in perfect registration for some of the vertices. So I can just take an indicator matrix indicating which vertices of the body correspond to this garment, multiply it here to obtain the, the corresponding vertices of the body, and take G and subtract this quantity in order to obtain this TG. And now if I have a new body shape, for example, this person over here, I can take the body vertices of this new person and add these displacements on top of it, such that you know I can dress the person by just adding these displacements. So notice that we've solved a pretty complex problem, which is registering a multi-layered model onto a scan. Uh, but once you've solved this problem, you can do things like, for example, um, register a person and then transfer this clothing to a second person. So here, this um, clothing that this person is wearing is essentially not real. It's um, it's basically transferred from the first subject. And this is all based on optimization and geometry. And there's no learning over here yet. Um, but you can see how you know this is powerful because it allows you to do linear algebra with, um, with clothing and bodies. Um, here's another example where a person is tracked and um, these tracked um, garments can be mapped to a second person. So notice how um, once we play the texture, like this produces a result that is, um, is quite compelling. It's not so easy to see what is the original data and what is the, um, the retargeted data. So you might recognize this image from our website. By the way, this is taken from this um, video clip. And um, yeah, you can take clothing of a single person and you can dress any person by just adding these displacements. Well, I should mention that these displacements here, um, they are added on top of the person. So they, they, this is not modeling how an actual garment would look on a person because we're not satisfying like the size of the t-shirt, where by adding these displacements on top of a bigger person, for example, we are making the, the t-shirt bigger as well. How to consider these effects, we will see later in the lecture. You, you have to basically have a model of clothing, which is not what ClothCup is doing. ClothCup is like an in-between, like it's a very simple model in order to obtain registration. And this concept of multi-layered registration is not... Um, restricted to to bodies and tight clothing, but it can also be used for tracking skirts. All you need to do is to um, to have a template for the skirt, and then um, you can have the skirt move along with the root joint of the body, and then you can track um, the skirt changes, and you can apply them to a target person. Okay, this concludes the first part, which is um, clothing representation as vertex displacements. Um, so I will stop here and we will continue with people in clothing from images in a new video.